And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and the Victory Church. So glad to have you tonight. We're going to just drop right in here and get after it and uh, get her done tonight. Praise the Lord. That's right. I turn my microphone down on my, or my speakers down on my phone again. That's a, a ongoing regular thing with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're glad to have you all with us tonight. And uh, we're continuing our study on soteriology. The study of salvation, and we um, came to uh, last time we were together. We didn't we didn't meet last week, uh, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, but uh, two weeks ago uh, we we started into the um, the things that that are essential essential uh, elements of salvation. The first one was repentance. Um, so we talked about repentance, and uh, we concluded that two weeks ago. Tonight we're going to begin on the subject of the second essential element of uh, salvation is faith, is faith. Um, it is necessary to receiving salvation. So you must receive salvation by faith. Um, now, the question always comes, which comes first, repentance or faith or faith or repentance? And, um, you know, um, <laughs> Calvin once said this, John Calvin, um, when John Smith goes through a door, who goes first, John or Smith? <laughs> Thus, it is difficult to be certain which one comes first, faith or repentance, or faith or repentance or faith, but we know both are necessary. A thesis says, as in the case of repentance, so is the case of faith. The doctrine does not receive the attention that it deserves. Great emphasis is laid on upon conduct. A man's creed is said to be a matter of indifference. Yet a man's life is governed by what he believes, and in religion by the person in whom he believes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so who do we believe in? Glory to God. Um, we can't overstate the importance of faith in our Christian life. It is the only avenue by which we can approach God. Hebrews eleven six: he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is, <clears throat> he is a rewarder of them which diligently seek him. And then we find out, uh, it says, without faith it is impossible to believe, please God. Hallelujah. Uh, for they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Um, everything a believer receives from God, he receives through faith. Okay? So faith is essential. It's the second essential element of element of salvation. The first being repentance. The second is uh, faith. And there's several others which we'll get to over the weeks to come. Hallelujah. So salvation through faith. Um, Hebrews 2 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Mark 16 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. John 1, 12, um, as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, remember, believing is the action of faith. You know, the, uh, the Greek um, word, Pisces, you know, the the noun form is faith. The verb form is believe. Hallelujah. Pisteo and Pisces. Hallelujah. To him that, Romans 4, 5, to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Um, and then Hebrews 9, I mean, uh, 10, 39, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And then John 5, 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death un, 
to life. So we see here through these scriptures that faith is essential in salvation. Faith is essential in salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now faith is on the fullness of the Holy Spirit comes through faith. Galatians 3.14, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Uh, John 7.39, this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Glory to God. Um, we're sanctified through faith. He, Hebrews 15.9, and put no difference between us or them, purifying their hearts by faith. Acts 26.18, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Jesus, of course, uh, making reference there. Hallelujah. Um, there is security by faith. 1 Peter 1, 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Romans eleven twenty, 20, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 1, 24, not for that which we ha have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy for by faith we stand. Hallelujah. We have perfect peace through faith that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Praise God. Because he trusteth in thee. That's Isaiah 26, 3. And then Hebrews 4, 3. We which have believed do enter into rest. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to enter into rest? Amen. Can I get an amen? Uh, healing comes through. Now, listen, these are all subjects we could cover and do series on, but we're just going to kind of this is an overview, okay? Healing comes through faith. Um, glory to God. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick or heal. That's sozo in the Greek. Save, sozo, heal. Uh, one, one of the uh, ways sozo is translated. Um, shall save the sick or heal the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. James 5 14. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had what? Faith to be healed. Acts 14 and 9. Glory to God. So healing comes through faith. Victory over adversaries comes through faith. Hallelujah. I just love that, don't you? The chief adversary of the church uh, may be summed up as our adversaries, maybe the world, the flesh, and the devil. Hallelujah, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, you know Satan influences the world. Satan influences the flesh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, we overcome the world through faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, 1 John 5, 4. The flesh is overcome by faith. Um, reckon, um, and which is the act of faith, ye also yourselves be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, he, uh, Romans 6, 11. So reckon, which is an act of faith. You, got to, you have to do that by faith. Amen? And then the devil is overcome through faith. Hallelujah. And he, in Ephesians 6, verses 6 through 16, we're going to pull out of that. We're not going to read the whole thing. But put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. <clears throat> Luke 22, 31 and 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, but that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail thee not. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for, for that. The fact that Jesus prayed that Simon Peter's faith would not fail him. He's making the intercession for us. He prays that our faith won't fail us. When the adversary comes, he prays our faith won't fail us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I get an amen from everybody out there tonight? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, 
the, our entire Christian life, the whole, everything we do as a believer is lived through faith. Hallelujah. We have four passages of Scripture that make this the following statement, the just shall live by faith, or the just, you know, some form of this. Um, Habakkuk 2 and 4, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, and Hebrews 10, 38. And then Galatians 2, 20, which sums this up, what we just said here. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Faith is the very atmosphere in which the Christian life is lived and walked out. We are called believers because our lives are lived in a continuous and ongoing faith. It is clear that it must have a great part of receiving salvation in its initial experience. Hallelujah. So we've laid out the case of, the, of faith. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about um, one, one, the meaning of faith. <clears throat> now, you know, the, probably the best definition for faith we find is in the Bible, of course, in Hebrews 11. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the, the hope the uh, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, it becomes more obvious the importance and the value of this uh, definition of faith when you look at uses of words in here. Faith is said to, said to be the substance. Now, the word substance comes from a Greek word that literally means foundation or that which underlies our hope. That which underlies our hope. Glory to God. So it, is, it underlies our hope. Um, foundation speaks of that covenant relationship of mutual love between the Lord and the believer, which is our ground of hope. Hallelujah. Faith is no, listen, this is where the church has gone off the deep end. Faith is no blind groping in the dark. Well, you, you got you to gotta just have faith in God. You never know what he's going to do. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to just blindly follow him. You know, whatever he's doing, I don't understand it. You know, the Lord knows what he's doing. I don't have a clue. Well, I'm going to have faith. That's not faith. That's just groping in the dark. It is a certain conviction born of love and experimental relationship that God reveals his word to you as truth. Faith is more than mere hope. It is substance, which was in legal affairs in the, in the time of its original use, um, translated title deed, translated title deed. He who believes divinely and whose heart love amounts to persuasion has a title deed to God's full provision. Faith is a persuasion as it implies, as it applies to the invisible. The react now listen, we understand this. The realities of God's kingdom are by nature invisible. Uh, realities. They're, they're invisible. Reality. That is uh, invisible to natural sight. You can't see it with your eyes. Natural eyes. Faith is that faculty by which the spiritual realities are perceived as being real and capable of being realized. He who has faith has eyes for the spiritual. Faith to the Christian is real evidence. Faith to the Christian is real evidence. Glory to God. Um, can we have whoever's in charge of the thermostat turn that down? Please. Glory to God. Faith to the Christian is real evidence. 
The believer needs no other evidence in order to produce or to proceed in accord with the real revealed will of God. Another thing, faith to the Christian. Hallelujah. He needs no other evidence in order to proceed in accordance with the revealed will of God. He, um, in classical Greek, the word we translate evidence often means proof. Faith is a foundation or is the foundation and a proof. Faith is your proof. It is your title deed. It is your guarantee. Hallelujah. That what God said is real. Now, just like in repentance, um, the elements of faith are um, intellectual, emotional, and uh, uh, viola uh, relational or voluntary. So let's talk about the intellectual uh, element of faith right now. Like we said earlier, faith is not groping around the dark. It's not a blind leap into the dark. Uh, people said sometimes, in the, you know, a step in the dark, you know, faith is a step in the dark, which leads to light. <clears throat> we just, you know, we just don't know what we're doing. Now, now, but God did tell Abraham to get the, get out of his kindred, away from his country, out of his kindred, and go into a place that I will show you. But that wasn't a blind step out into darkness. He had a word from God that God was going to reveal where he was going, but he needed to, to do, step away from his family, leave his country, and he would show him more. But we get people who walk around and they're, you know, all kinds of stuff's happening in their life. And they're just, well, I, I'm, I trust, I'm trusting God. You don't have a word. You ain't got nothing. You got cancer and the doctor said you're going to die. You, you got cancer and we're, I'm just trusting the Lord. Trusting the Lord for what? See, what, what, what is it that you are trusting God for when the doctor says you got cancer and you got six months to live and you're just going, well, I'm just trusting the Lord. You're in the dark because you don't really know what you're trusting God for. Well, he knows best. Best what? What is it that you, he knows best for when you say this? Those statements are just a groping in the dark. Huh? And we can't do that. Praise God. Um, it is un, it's unsafe to take a step in the dark. A man could be, you could be on the precipice of a canyon in the dark and take one step without knowing where you're stepping and plunge into, into uh, to doom. Faith must begin with knowledge. Now, Brother Hagin, you say this, and F.F. And, and F. Bosworth has um, said this. Faith begins where the will of God is known, the knowledge of God's will. That's where faith begins. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And so um, faith is based on not, it, it, it's not just, it's not, well, you know, you just never know what God's going to do. And I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of walk out there and hopefully somehow, some way it'll all work out. And if it doesn't work out the way I want it to, God knew what he was doing. You're, you're, you just stepped off the cliff and didn't know. You had no clue if God wanted you to keep going or not. We have to have the knowledge of one's will. Okay? You can't believe in something of which you have no knowledge. You cannot believe in a person with whom you are completely unacquainted. Believing a thing without evidence is impossible. Well, I don't need any evidence. Wait, 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 wait. Faith that is needed for salvation is based on the very best of evidence, the Bible, as the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to know the gospel in order to believe that Christ is our Savior. Now, people don't get saved, just wake up one day and go, I believe in God and I get saved. What did the Bible say? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. What preceded them believing? The preaching of the gospel. Knowledge of God's will came through the preaching of the gospel. Can you say amen? 
knowledge of God's will to save comes through the preaching of the gospel. These people who have, you know, can tire denominations based on you're going to get saved whether you like it or not. And people who want, uh, people are not going to get saved whether they like it or not because they're, they're, they're predestined and God's elected certain folk to get saved and certain folk to go to hell. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Totally contrary to Scripture. Only by taking Scripture out of context and not taking all the counsel of the Word of God can you come up with that. We talked about it earlier when we were talking about election. Because election was based on foreknowledge. But Jesus commanded us to go to all the world and preach the gospel. Why? So that men might believe. So that men might believe. They cannot believe until they hear the truth. Amen. And it was the preaching of the gospel. Remember, the angel went to Ananias's house and told him to go find one Peter, um, surname, one Simon, surnamed Peter, and he would come and, and preach to him. The angel couldn't even preach it. Peter had to go preach. Hello? Glory to God. All right. So, they must hear the gospel. The emotional aspect or element of uh, faith. We, know, we, we oftentimes see uh, uh, this element is in joy that accompanies the first realization of God's goodness in providing the accompanies, in providing that which accompanies the fir, um, one's need. It is illustrated by Israel's experience as described in the 106th Psalm in verse 12. They believed they his words, they sang his praise. They believed his words, they sang his praise. But the emotion of joy can pass too quickly. Verses 24 and 25 of that same psalm says, They believed not his word, but they murmured in their tents and hearkened not <coughs> unto the voice of the Lord. When Jesus described these kind of people, these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they've heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, have no root in themselves, and so endure but of time, Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, um, immediately they are offended. Hallelujah. Dr. T.A.T. Pearson uh, said, here is the for order. Fact leads. Faith with its eye on the fact following. Feeling with its eye on faith brings up the rear. All goes well as long as this order is observed. But the moment that faith turns its back on fact and looks at feeling, the procession wobbles. Wow. In other words, faith has to be based in fact. And fact is the truth, the gospel, the word of God. But when you let feeling be what comes first, you're in trouble. Well, I don't feel like anything happened. We're not based on feeling. What does God's word say? Hallelujah. Um, the element of faith also includes an assent of the mind to the truth perceived. The scribes replied to Jesus' explanation of the greatest commandment. You know, thou shalt love the Lord thy God thy, with all thy heart, soul, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. And they said, well, master, thou hast said the truth. In Mark 12, 32 and 33. Thesen summarized um, this emotional element of faith. We may define the emotional element of faith as the awakening of the soul to its personal needs and to the personal applicability of the redemption provided in Christ together with an immediate assent to those truth, those truths together with an immediate assent to those truths. And thirdly, the voluntary element. When you know what God has promised and after assenting to the truth of that promise, then faith reaches out and appropriates what is provided. Knowledge itself is not enough. Knowledge itself is not enough. 
A man may have the knowledge that Christ is divine and yet still reject him as Savior. Knowledge affirms the reality of the things, but it neither accepts or rejects, nor is assent enough. There is an assent of the mind which does not convey a surrender of the heart. And let's stop. E.W. Kenyon talks about mental assent. The mind says, yeah, that's true. But the heart's not involved. Romans 10.10 with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Real faith is in the realm of the will. It appropriates. It takes. Faith always uh, has the idea of action in it. Uh, one person said it this way. Faith has legs. It is the soul leaping up and embracing the promise Romans 4.21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Glory to God. Thus, this phase of faith, the, you know, con comprises of two elements. Okay, so the, the voluntary element of the, of the three comprises of two. That is, surrender of the heart to God and the appropriation of Christ as Savior. Remember? For with the mouth confession is made, and with the heart man, I mean, for with the heart man, uh, and with the mouth confession is made, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. There we go. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me thy heart. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Now, literally, it's translated that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus as Lord, conveying the thought of the surrender of the Lordship of Jesus over your entire life. Which so many people want to want to skirt that one. He's not the fire escape from hell. He is you surrender to him and to his will and his purposes. The appropriation of Christ as Savior means to fully receive all that he has done on Calvary in his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven and seating at the right hand of the Father for the redemption of your spirit. As many as received him, gave he the power to become the sons of God. Can you say amen out there? Glory to God. Um, even to them that believe on his name, John 1, 12. This personal appropriation is a vital necess necessity. It is not enough to believe that Jesus died I must recognize, and you must recognize, he died for you, or he died for me individually. It is true that he died for all, but I must individually accept him as my Savior. Water is provided for all, but I shall die of thirst if I do not dr personally drink of the life-giving flow. Hallelujah. Air is provided for all. <clears throat> but I must personally, individually, breathe it if I am to survive. There must be an individual commitment in the heart of man to Christ and a personal acceptance of him as both Savior and Lord. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. The source of faith, where does it come from? There are many blessings or many other blessings relative to the Christian life which are received through faith and which we've talked about here. But we are particularly concerned here with the part faith has in our experience of salvation and how this saving faith is received. Many times individuals when confronted with the gospel and told that all they have to do is believe will reply, but it's so hard to believe. Listen, 
If you are the, if you're a person who is trying to believe in your faith or in something that you're doing, it's difficult because because neither the faith, your faith, nor your works are sufficient. You know, faith. I'm having faith in my own faith to you know get saved. And he realizes this. Faith is based on what God has done and what God has promised, not on a man. Remember Ephesians chapter 2? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is not the works of a man. It is not the believing in your, you know, your self-made man or whatever. It is in the work of God, God that he's given and provided to you by grace that you by faith accept and receive into your life. Praise God. Amen. Can you get a shout out there? Hallelujah. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it's entirely based on the finished work of Christ as revealed in the scripture. Your salvation can, can come no other way. In other words, it is based on God's word. Remember, we already quoted Hebrew, Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The New International Version uh, states it this way. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Then Acts 4, 4 says this. How many, how be it many of them which heard the word believed. Got to hear the word. This is why it's so important that we share the gospel with people. They're not going to get saved by you just going up and saying, God loves you. You've got to give the gospel. Jesus died. You are, you're lost in sin. Jesus died for your sin. If you'll believe on him, he'll forget. He, 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 in, in, in an individual manner, you will be forgiven and made whole and born again by the power of God. But just kind of going around saying, well, God loves everybody and everybody's going to heaven. You know, universalism, we got to get away from this. Letting, letting the effects of false doctrine affects the church with like universalistic, um, universalism theology entering to, into the true church. Those sort of Christian cults that, that you know, present one thing and are a lie. Nope. They heard the word. They believed when they heard the word. Nothing will produce faith more than reading and studying the word of God. And I, I remember when I was, um, when God was dealing with me, I grew up in church and I got a job as a computer programmer and I was, you know, and the guy there was witnessing to me and sharing the Bible with me. And, and you know, and I heard a lot my whole life. But one of the things I started doing when, when God really began to deal with me, I started getting my Bible out and started reading it. Now, this, this can give you a secret. You know somebody that's been running from God and they started reading their Bible? They're toast. Their days are numbered as an unbeliever. Their days of running from God are numbered because the Holy Spirit is dealing with them and their heart is being drawn there and they're looking into the Word and the faithful teacher, the Holy Ghost, is working right there with them, right there, opening up and revealing power. Hallelujah. By the power of God, the truth. Can you say Glory. I got one glory. Can I get a glory on the internet? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Um, that when you study the word of God, become acquainted with God and what he has promised, faith is simply believing what God said. It's taking him in his word. Romans 10, 8, 9. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus as Lord and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In John 5, 24, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. We could be, it could be, you know, understood, granted that the gospel of grace of God to sinful man sounds too good to be true. But when, when we consider it is planned by God and brought about by him and promised by him, it should not be difficult to take him at his word 
That is what faith does. Amen. So the second element or, um, yeah, the second element is, of, of all of this is that faith is required in salvation. First of all is repentance. Second is faith. Next week we're going to get into justification because it's the third. Hallelujah. And then following that's regeneration. So there's, you know, there's more to do. Uh, so next week we'll get into, you know, um, justification. But remember that, you know, repentance came. Faith is necessary. We must believe. So for somebody to be saved, faith has to be involved. And the only way that faith is going to be involved is faith comes by hearing. We have to preach the gospel because it is the truth. Knowledge, faith begins with the will of God is known. You know, I mean, I've heard, I've heard preachers say this one time. I, was, I, was, I, I couldn't even believe it. You know, as, a, as a pastor in our local area, yeah, well, yeah, give an altar call. Come on down. You never know. This just might, meet, might be your day. Well, he just destroyed his altar call. What do you mean? Because the devil going to sit on that guy's shoulder that heard that and go, it ain't your day. He has no basis for faith because you never know. It just might be your day. How can you have faith in a you never know it might be your day? When the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Well, that kind of does away with that other altar call statement. You never know. It just might be your day. See, we say things that sound spiritual. They're so full of unbelief and, and, and error. It, it may make your head spin. No, we, should, we tell people, today's your day of salvation. If you don't harden your heart as Israel did in the day of propagation, and, you know, and they entered not into his rest. Why? Because they, they provoked him by not accepting his day of salvation when the Bible says today is your day. Don't resist God, run to God. Right now, today is your day. Well, how do you know it's my day? Because it's today. And today is a day of salvation. When you hear the message, that word comes, faith comes. You could act on that right now and be born again. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the second uh, aspect in relation to salvation after repentance is faith. Praise God. Next week we'll talk about how that justification uh, plays into this, this role. Let's go ahead and receive our weekly offering. We're glad that you joined us, praise God. And, um, but we're going to receive the offering now. And if you have a, um, uh, we're going to give electronically. And that's the only way we can give right now. We can't take it from you in person. Um, but, you, you know, go ahead and get your offering ready and get on PayPal or, or the, the cash app. And uh, we can send that in and uh, we're going to pray for you right now in Jesus name. Don't forget to keep posting, you know, about uh, the GoFundMe page about the uh, building fund. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offering. Thank you that people are blessed in accordance with your holy word. And we thank you that heaven's windows are opened unto them and you empty out on them blessings. They do not. In the name. Amen. 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 Amen.